welcome to the Sports Entrepreneur Show powered by The Ninja Zone, the only podcast for sports entrepreneurs that gives you an inside look into what it takes to turn your passion for sports into a business. I'm your host, Casey Wright. And thanks for joining me this week as I sit down with Jared Bisco, co-founder of multiple fitness and nutrition brands. And we're going to talk a little bit about a simple strategy to keep your members signed up and energy auditing. Super excited for this show, Jared. How's it going? Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation. Gosh, you guys, you are doing so many amazing things and I uh, was super excited when you said you would come on the podcast. So um, just give everybody just a little bit of background of how you took your sports background into the business world. Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in Northwest Indiana, uh, Maryville, Indiana, and played soccer my entire life, travel soccer and played all sorts of sports. So every sport you can imagine, I guess I, the easiest way to say it is I did not wrestle and I did not swim. Other than that, I pretty much, you know, did everything as a child. Eventually got lucky to get a Division One scholarship to play soccer at IUPUI, which is downtown Indianapolis. Um, spent four years there and got a triple major. So I'm in the Kelly School of Business, Management, HR, and International Business. So got a lot done in four years and then did the traditional – Moved to Chicago, uh, you know, back then, Indianapolis, not many people uh, stayed in the city. And there's a lot of brain drain at the time, which is changing recently, which is amazing to see. Um, so I moved to Chicago, did a couple different jobs up there. Got very lucky to um, find a job with PlayStation and traveled around the country for about two and a half, three years, which allowed me to build some networks. It's also built some leadership qualities, get comfortable with traveling across the country um, and then after all that uh, said and done, my best friend who I've known since uh, six, we were six years old, played sports together my whole life, Peter Brosvon, now my co-owner of Naptown Fitness, business partner, we decided to open a CrossFit gym. And at that time, the conversation was, let's go somewhere cool. So I was actually, and we don't have to get in this part of the story, but I was actually living in the Virgin Islands at that time uh, in St. Croix. So we had talked about opening a CrossFit gym on the island St. Croix, but as I mean, anyone listening to this can imagine, the uh, logistics of getting equipment and everything down there was a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll move back to the states. So I uh, moved up back up to Chicago actually, and then we had we were gonna open up in Chicago, but the cost of living, cost of square footage, everything in the city just seemed a little bit, I guess, uh, intimidating would be the word. Um, so then that's when we were like, well, let's you know, let's leverage our networks in Indianapolis and, you know, go back to where we went to school for four, four and a half years. And we were actually the first CrossFit gym downtown. So we wanted to get in there as quickly as possible. And that happened in 2011. And, uh, you know, just like any other entrepreneur, there's a lot of obstacles, a lot of headaches that we had to deal with. And we actually had a letter of intent signed on a building, getting ready to sign on a Friday. And then that morning we got a call from our broker and it's like, yep, the landlord decided to pull the deal. You guys don't have a space, figure it out. So we trained people at the park, military park, the canal. And then eventually we were fortunate to find uh, the space that we originally opened up in, which is um, 609 North Delaware Street, downtown Indianapolis. So that's where the CrossFit gym started back in 2011. And then it kind of grew from there, I guess you'd say. I know that's where we met was I, I started doing CrossFit at your gym and I was just, um, really, I, I loved people there. You can, you can just see the passion with the network and the community and not just through CrossFit itself, but you, you could just tell that you guys were in it for the right reasons. And I just wanted to give you props on that because I felt it and I loved being a member there. <laughs> I appreciate it. So you mentioned something when you first started you said that you played all kinds of sports as a kid, everything except for wrestling and swimming. And I guess I want to, I'm a big proponent of lots of sports for kids because of the fitness aspect of it. And I feel like sports in general have taken in the last two decades have taken this turn where everybody is drilled into a single sport really, really early, and they're not getting the benefits of the fitness aspect of it, right? So they're, you know, if they're not going to be an Olympian or a collegiate athlete in, you know, this one sport and mom and dad can see that at six, then they move them to something else. And what's happening is 
all the kids are stopping doing sports and then they're on the couch by the time they're 13. I think that what you did as a kid by playing multiple sports, it, it seems like it's worked out for you. And now you're, you're in a, in a business for fitness and sport. So do you have any thoughts about that? I'm certainly not an expert on this topic. I know there's doctors out there in different, you know, forums that talk about this all the time. Um, I not a, I'm not a fan of specialization for for children in sports. Um, I'm I'm on the same same side as you in the sense of allowing kids to do as many different things and be as creative as they can. You know, I think the world, the U.S. especially, is changing a little bit in the sense of what kids are getting into these days and what they're allowed to do. I think you know. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I mean, all we did was go outside. It's like, you know, mom and dad be like, go outside, go play basketball for three hours and then come in and have dinner. And that's, you know, it's what we would do. We'd go to the, you know, the, the river, the creeks and just hang out, shoot some hoops. And, you know, that's part of what life was about. And same thing when you got into middle school or high school and played sports, that's what everyone did was played sports. And now, like you said, it's kind of changing a little bit where kids are getting burnt out and, you know, I have an older brother who, you know, specifically played soccer and that was it. And he got burnt out and, you know, stopped playing soccer and he had, you know, college scholarship opportunities, didn't take them because he was just burnt out. And you see that all the time and it's unfortunate. Um, and I think that's actually why I am so attracted to CrossFit as well as, you know, 2 million other people are attracted to CrossFit because that's the idea, constantly varied functional movements, high intensity. So constantly varied, meaning every single day you're doing something completely different and, you know, I've been doing this now for, as an athlete, doing CrossFit for eight plus years, and it, I, I'm still getting better. And that's what's amazing about the whole program. That's what's amazing about the constantly varied aspect. So, you know, bringing us back to the original question, yeah, I, I'm all about trying as many different things as possible. Well, and the cool thing is, too, is you, <laughs> when you take more of a fitness approach and a, a functional movement approach, it allows you to reach more people. And anytime you can reach more people, there's business opportunity. And the just the industries get bigger and bigger rather than specializing and get smaller and smaller. So the one thing that I definitely want to, I, I just want to tell people about because I've admired with, I admire you guys so much in what you've done with the community. Um, I noticed it from the very beginning from a marketing aspect and just getting involved. So do you consider that like part of your success, a big part, a little part? And if so, how, what are the things that you've done to use the, the community to build your business? Community is hard to quantify, but it is, interestingly enough, it's been in our logo for the last six years. You know, our logo now actually recent used to say Yoga Swift CrossFit Community, which yoga is a program we have. Swift is a boot camp class we have. And then we have obviously every CrossFit. And then recently we changed it to nutrition, fitness, health. And then the fourth word again stayed with that old logo of community because it is that vital to us. With CrossFit, that's I think that's one of the, the the buzzwords people say all the time. Like, why do you do CrossFit? It's like, oh, the community. But I think it lends to a lot of other pieces. You know, it's it's accountability. It's the family aspect. It's the friend aspect. It's you're you know you're going through these workouts, but you're not going through them alone. One of the first things we do when someone uh, comes into our gym is we for, force we tell our coaches like you have to shake every single person's hand and you as soon as they walk in the door or say hi to them. And one of our other rules is every single coach has to say every member's name three times during a one hour class. I don't care if you have, I don't care if you have three people in class or you have 33 people in class, your goal for that class is to say their name three different times. And you know, just to show that you care about them, show that you know who they are, that you know what their name is. And I really think that's what separates us from some of these other facilities. You know, people always ask questions of, you know, like, are you scared of orange theory? It's like, no, I love orange theory. I, I love the fact that people are getting off the couch and doing things like I want more fitness um, brands to come out because it allows people to see that everyone can do fitness. But I think what we do a little bit different is that community aspect is making sure that retention is super important to us. Um, and so if you don't know someone's name, are they going to want to stay at your gym? Probably not. You know, th well, that's awesome. And I wrote it down because <laughs> we talk about that, but we don't have a metric set on that. And that's, it's so specific and great. And I actually heard at a conference once it said, how many customers would you have if you had never lost any? 
And so a lot of times people spend so much time and money on marketing and we've got to get more people in the door. And yeah, they're worried about competition and this and that. And it's like, man, if you just didn't lose any, holy moly, right? We would... It's insane. <laughs> so that's cool. Like that's, that's super cool. So let me ask you what... Well, first of all, what do you feel like you're totally winning at right now? What are you doing really, really well that you're proud of and you want to brag a little. This is going to sound super vague, but I, I would say life as a whole. <laughs> That's a pretty good. <laughs> um, I, I've learned a lot. I do a lot of self-development. I was, I was going to say self-help, but self-development is a better word for me to use. So I like to, I like to learn. Um, I like to, to figure out how to optimize my output, whether it be work or, you know, mental aspects, you know, meditation, all sorts of different things I'm working on done a lot of research recently on fasting because I think fasting is very interesting of keeping your blood sugar levels at the same the same level the whole time. So, you know, in the sense of life right now, my wife and I are building a um, dream home. So we, we, we're building a custom built home. In fact, they're just started digging, broke ground just now, 30 minutes before we got on this call right outside my door. So I'm pretty pumped about that. And you know, one of the things we really strive for is working towards uh, a perfect day, our perfect day. And that perfect day is going to change every three months. You know, you know, probably six months ago, if you asked me my perfect day, or actually two years ago, if you asked me my perfect day was, is sleep until 10, go work out, come back, drink some coffee, hang out, you know, sit outside, get a suntan and go back to the gym, hang out, talk with people and be done for the day. Nowadays, it's I, my perfect day's changed. I want to wake up at 5 a.m. I want to read. I want to learn. I want to do something creative. And then I want to go work out. Then I want to come back and help develop, meet with people for coffee and do some mentorship. So it's super important to reassess that perfect day on a you know quarterly basis, you know semi-annual basis. And it's something I challenge my wife to. I challenge all of our staff members to. And it's, it's instrumental in you know refocusing yourself. I love the the perfect day and I love the fact that that it changes and you mentioned earlier about how you know with all of the different brands and everything all the all of the little businesses under the big businesses I can relate to that but I I think the way that I would see it when when people say how do you do this oh my gosh how do you get all of it done it's just like building a muscle. So it's just like working out in the gym. And when I first go to CrossFit and, and I pick up, you know, I can barely lift the bar and then you just keep going and then you, you put on weight and it feels the same as it did to lift the bar the first time after the muscles are built, right? It's just like, it's, it's the same. It feels the same, but to the outside world looking in, it looks, you know, monumental, but it's just those everyday little incremental pushes to build the muscles. Exactly. And, you know, I run in, I run into that a lot with people when I, you know, I sit down with a couple of younger, you know, in their early twenties, mid twenties who are interested in entrepreneurship. And I'm, I'm uh, very active in the startup community uh, here in Indianapolis and just working with people This, you know, we can talk about that a little bit later, the podcast I run as well. And, you know, a lot of times people see where I'm at now, I'm 34 now, started the business when I was 26. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm 26. Like, I need to start something because that's when you started it. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like that you don't, you don't need to do anything yet. And by the way, like it took time to get there. Like that's seven or eight years worth of time to get to that point. So it's patience, right? Making sure you're, you're confident and just take your time with something. One of my biggest lessons learned was that uh, artists, uh, aka entrepreneurs, sometimes tend to skip steps. <laughs> we are not very linear thinkers, so uh, that's that's something when you when you skip a lot of steps and then you have to go back and <laughs> put the steps back in. It it takes a little bit of time. Well, um, tell me what's like what's next on the list? What's the next big dream? With our business right now, we. Peter and myself, my business partner with Naptown Fitness, we actually have been working with a mentorship group um, that focuses primarily with fitness centers. Their name's Two Brain Business, and they do a phenomenal job working with CrossFit gyms. I think they have over like 400 clients across the world. With the mentorship group, they've allowed us to sort of take this big ship that wasn't necessarily on the right course and help us turn that ship and get it straight on course. So we've had some of the best months we've had in, in a long time. And what we've really started to notice is getting the, our staff 
in, you know, we've had the right team and, you know, people always talk about teamwork and, you know, making sure you have the right people. Uh, but one of the issues we had for a long time is we had, we had the right people, but we didn't necessarily have the right people in the right places. So that was a huge, huge eye opener for us in 2018. So what we did was we actually worked through, are you familiar with the energy audit or an energy audit? No, I've heard of energy management, maybe the same, but tell me because just that sounds good. <laughs> I want to know more about that. <laughs> no, this is, this is, this is awesome. And this kind of like, you know, like I said, I do a lot of self-development work and such on my, on, on myself. And this is one tool I love using as well as, and it works well for businesses is, you know, just, you just write energy in on the left side and energy out on the right side, and then just draw a line in between the two. And then you literally just sit there and then you write everything down. You can do this specific to a business. You can do specific to your life. You can do it to like, you know, whatever you want. And then you start writing down things that bring you energy, things that you love, things that light you up, things that make you happy, things that like you wake up in the morning at 4 a.m. because you just want to do it. And then on the right side, you have energy out. And these are things that just suck energy out of you. Like every single time you're about to do something, you're like, God, I don't want to do that. Or if you find yourself procrastinating on a certain uh, activity, that's your energy out. Those are things you just hate doing. Um, so what we try to do now with all of our staff, or not try to do, what we do with our staff is we tell people like, sit down, write down within Naptown Fitness, within your roles and responsibilities, like what do you hate doing? And before you know it, there's writing down three, four, five, six things. It's like, okay, what do you love doing? Or what would you love doing? And then they write down three or five. And it's like, okay, well, you know, common sense here. Let's start taking all of those things and the energy out and start, you know, take giving those out to other members or other staff members who actually, those are things that bring them energy. And believe it or not, we saw tons of different situations where one employee here hated something, but the other employee on the other side loved it. And we're like, well, why don't we just flip flop those roles? So I do this for myself personally, you know, there are certain things that I'm just getting frustrated with or certain projects I'm getting frustrated with. I'm like, I don't like doing this. And it's like, how do I figure out how to build this system and then delegate it, pass it off to someone else. And then so, you know, when coming back to when you asked that question, what I'm winning at, and I said life is because I slowly been taking things that I don't like doing and telling other people to do them and delegating out to other people to do. And it's, it's been amazing. That's so true. And I'm so like, I, I, I do something similar that I, I love it. And that's also written down. I, I love it. <laughs> I do something like at the end of the year where I will go back through my calendar and literally look at every single day and just divide it into two columns. And I didn't use it energy in or out. It was the question of, do I want to do this again tomorrow? And then if it ended up on the left side, then I would make my goals for the year to reduce those things and then increase the ones on the other side. So kind of similar, but I love this. I love it. And especially when you're talking about a team, because the one thing that we've seen has been, oh, it's been so huge is um, just understanding personalities and how people communicate or how they're motivated. And yeah, like if you can, I mean, if you can really take the time, I mean, there were people that I made horrible, like wrong assumptions of judgments because I didn't understand the way they processed information, but just taking the time to develop your people around you, like the way that you know, when you talk about personal development and self-development to do that with a team of people and pour into them, it just, you, you just make your growth exponential. And clearly you guys have done that because you have multiple locations in not very many years. You have multiple brands in not very many years, and you feel like you're, you're winning at life and you're not drowning where most people would feel like, ah, I can't even keep my head above water. Well, if you asked me a year and a half, two years ago, guess what? Guess what? I was, <laughs> I was, I was drowning for sure. You know, I think the the, the most important part of all of that, like that whole entire process, and like again, that took that's a year and a half, two years of learning, and then to putting these things into place with our staff. But like, really, what it really came down to is Peter and I found out that we just need to remove ourselves from the day to day, remove ourselves from the business, and we have the right people. And sure enough, guess what? We've had the best three months in revenue we've ever had before. And our staff is just killing it right now. Like they don't want us around. They're, they're like, let us do this. Stop micromanaging. And it's like, okay. And it took, you know, again, cutting that umbilical cord is very, very difficult. But now that we have, I'm just like, wow, they're, they're doing an amazing job. Like, why am I keep, why do I keep tinkering and screwing things up? I'm done. I'm, I'm walking away for now. 
It's so cool too, when you can see other people grow under your leadership and then it just becomes like a bigger, it's just a, it's a, it's an exponential win, at least for me that, that I can see that I've planted that seed and that's what, you know, you guys have done and they, they want to do a good job. But yet when you step away and say, Hey, it's okay to make a mistake because, you know, we made a ton of mistakes and still are, but to let people make mistakes. I mean, we put it in the, you know, in the ninjas creed is ninjas make mistakes. And I, I think that, I don't know if it's school or, or, or what this whole like um, mentality of it, it's wrong to make mistakes. And it's like, that's exactly how you learn. And then it actually sticks. Like there's nothing better than to make a change when you've been burned by something like I'll never do that again. But to have somebody tell you it's, it's not the same or, you know, not let you fail. I, I actually, I never really even answered your question. So I was, I kind of forgot what it was to tell you was, the truth. <laughs> um, you know, what's, what's next for us kind of what we're yeah, moving towards. Yeah, yeah. And sorry, I, I told you off mic, I go on crazy tangents all the time when my brain's firing. Um, but really what we're focused on right now is the epidemic that's taking place across our country. And this is something that I can, oh my goodness, I can get super passionate about. So, so cut me off if I go crazy. But you know, right now the obesity epidemic is more specifically what I'm talking about. And just the understanding of how important nutrition is in our daily lives and you know being able to perform well do good work to feel clear-minded to you know not run into any um, uh, cardiovascular issues or chronic illnesses and how important nutrition is so right now what we're doing is we've built out a nutrition program naptown nutrition and um, it's phenomenal at this point it's doing really well to the point where we're gonna have to shut down what we call no snack intros. So we allow people to come in for 15 minutes, meet with, we have three people in our Naptown Nutrition staff right now. And they sit down for 15 minutes, talk about our programs, our offerings. We have some monthly reoccurring programs. Um, and right now we have, we just started about a month and a half ago, maybe six weeks ago. And we already have, I think 37, 40, 40 ish people that are signed up with reoccurring nutrition work. And Right now, those are only Naptown Fitness members. Our goal, our hope in the future is to reach out to the greater Indianapolis area, which I'm sure you're familiar with or you know, but Indianapolis is always rated as one of the worst cities when it comes to uh, obesity and just you know people getting outside and being fit and doing things and being healthy. So one of our goals that we tasked ourselves with, Peter and myself, is by 2025 to bring Indianapolis to the top 20 in the most fit cities in the world or in the, in the country. So That's a big dream. I would love to be an ambassador outside of uh, in the, the greater Indianapolis area. Like, sign me up. I think Indianapolis has, I mean, we're beyond the raw talent, but what this city will be in 10 years because of of the things that, you know, people like you are doing is, is, is pretty neat. And, you know, I wanted to say with the obesity epidemic and especially with the kids, we see a lot of that obviously in the gym and, and with Ninja Zone, but I, as a parent uh, and no, no kids yet, right? For you? No, no, no kids. Yet. No kids yet. And I will say that that's something that has been really, really difficult. And I feel like if there is education on how we can lead nutritious lives with children, just with their community and, and their everything. It is so very difficult to not make them feel like an outcast when they're the only one like taking their lunch to school or, you know, just not eating the things that everybody else is eating. And I think that in general, our, our nation, it, it's like this food is love concept. Like if I'm, if I'm feeding my kid cookies, like they know I love them because we know that that sugar lights them up and it makes them happy. And it's like, how do we change that mindset of parents? Because that was tough. When I was downtown, it was easier and moving out to the suburbs, it's much more difficult. So that, I mean, that's huge for families. So let's wrap this up just a little bit, but this is one question. It's my favorite question. So I'm going to ask, you know, growing up, playing all kinds of sports throughout your childhood and in college, what do you feel like is your biggest sports lesson that has become a life lesson or a business lesson? I would say 
kind of two things that coincide and teamwork being one, being able to understand others, work with others. I think one of the issues we run into often in the world we live in, especially here in the States is, is empathy. And I don't think people understand how, what other, what other people are going through um, in, in their, in their lives, you know, uh, and, you know, asking those questions, learning more about people and understanding how to work with those people from that aspect. And then the second thing I would say to that is uh, leadership and just being able to understand the different types of leadership and also knowing, like, I consider myself a leader, but if I'm in a room of seven other leaders, I'm completely comfortable and content with stepping back and letting them take the, the focus and then just kind of offering my opinions when, when I need to. So being able to, I guess, be a leader when it's needed is kind of my second takeaway from, from sports. Very cool. Well, thank you. And before we go, favorite apps or tools that you are loving right now and want to share? One of my biggest things right now is my wife and I are trying to learn a uh, second language. Uh, so we're learning Spanish on Duolingo, D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O. And it's a free app. So we use that every single day. In fact, right now, I'm just not clicking on it. We are, um, or I got signed out. I think we're like 240 days in a row consistently of doing 15 minutes of Spanish or more. That's awesome. Um, so they, so this app prides, prides themselves on like the whole continuation philosophy of you do it one day, you do it next day, and then you don't want to stop doing it because you don't want to lose your streak. Yeah. So you, you may be familiar with that. Very cool. The other ones, yeah, there's, um, what else do I use a lot of? Oh, Audible, Game Changer, for sure. I listen to books nonstop. Um, if I'm driving, walking a dog, or, you know, mowing the lawn, whatever it is, I'm either listening to a podcast or listening to a book because you have to nowadays. <laughs> you know, that audiobooks absolutely changed my life. And that's when I run, I listen to audiobooks. But what I've noticed, and I this is totally anecdotal evidence, I want somebody to do like a study on it. I absorb the information better when my heart rate's up. So I, I, somebody, I'm sure there's some kind of study out there or something, but I actually retain information way better when I like am in the zone. Is that when you're like steady state? So like aerobic? Yes. Work, like like, aer- like biking, running, biking, running. Yep. Okay. Like anytime if my heart rate's up and I'm listening to something and I don't know if it's just like endorphins that makes it more of like an emotional connection where it's because my endorphins are, are up and I'm feeling great that I can, you know, absorb the information and see how it applies. But it's like that 100% changed my life because I learned that I was auditory. I used to fall asleep when I read when I was a kid. I mean, I've never been a reader, but I can audiobook like every, I mean, every day I read a, or listen to a book a week, it, but I can use it, not just listen to it, but actually use it, but I can't do it on, on an airplane. So I, it has something to do with my heart rate. So I don't know, sure. maybe someday okay. somebody will figure that out. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure there's some sort of science out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been awesome. Can you um, tell people where they can connect with you and reach you and find you? And we did not get to talk about your awesome <laughs> podcast, but <laughs> no, this, right. I mean, we, so that just means I'm going to have to have you back on. There you go. So tell everybody where they can find you. You can find me individually at J A Bisco. So J A B Y C Z K O on Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, Jared Bisco, and then you can email me at jared at crossfitnaptown.com if you want to ask some questions. I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm very help first oriented from that standpoint. Um, Naptown Fitness, you can find Naptown Fitness on Facebook, uh, www.naptownfitness.com. Um, you can find us on Instagram and all the other social medias as well. And then we have our sub brands that all have media platforms and I won't go through all that. Um, and then I do have a podcast called Drink Culture, which is highlighting uh, hyper-local to Indianapolis and highlighting business leaders, thought leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, just artists and personalities here that are doing cool things. So, And that's D-R-N-K-C-L-T-R, or you could spell it out, Drink Culture. Um, and we're on Instagram, Facebook, and websites and stuff too. So a lot of things going on, a lot, a lot of things out there. So I love it. Thank you. You've been absolutely amazing. And um, I'm yeah, now I have to invite you back. So we'll see you I soon. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you for having me. <laughs> Jared Bisco gave us a lot to think about. 
I want to close today's show by sharing a couple of things that you can take from our conversation and apply to your business and your life. First, the energy audit. What brings you energy and what takes away energy and monitoring those things and adjusting your schedule accordingly. Awesome information. The second big takeaway from Jared was creating your perfect day and truly having a schedule in mind from beginning to end that is the perfect day, something that you can strive to to get to and make better all the time. Another great takeaway from Jared was their strategy to retain members. And each one of their instructors had a goal of saying each member's name three times every class. You can catch our show wherever you access podcasts via iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or Google Play. Check the links to products and resources discussed in this week's show at thesportsentrepreneur.com. That's T-H-E sportsentrepreneur.com. And while you're there, send me your guest requests and the questions you want answers to. Thank you and join me next week for another sports business conversation.